What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex. In this video, I want to talk about if the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game can survive long term. I like to do this from time to time, but not for all multiplayer games, mainly for the ones that I like actively enjoy, actively care about. Uh, half is a selfish reason, right? Where it's like, can this game please survive long term? I want to see more stuff. I want to see a game that I do like. I want to see it succeed. But also to ask the question, see what you guys think at home. Um, honestly, I'm kind of split. I'll be honest. 50 50 on if this game can last. Now, I guess the number one question is, what is lasting, right? And I like to kind of delve into that at least a little bit in these videos. Because you could say, well, what is success? What is, like, if the game is doing well, quote unquote, two, three months from now, what does that even look like? I think it would just be to keep the numbers as high as you possibly can. So when you go to like the Steam database chart, which is honestly the only thing you really have. Now, it's not a full picture. In fact, it's not even close, right? Because you have Game Pass. If you're playing on an Xbox, and by the way, when I've played this game cross-play, when I've played it on Xbox, when I play it on PlayStation, the majority, for sure. Now, I don't know the statistics of this. They haven't really said it. But what I have played, I've played against a lot of Xbox users. Not PC, Xbox right? And that's through Game Pass. And I've said this before, that's going to help the game like flat out. I was excited for that. I thought that was a huge, huge get for Game Pass. I mean, I don't know how much they gave, you know, Gun. Hopefully they made a little bit of money on this as well. But that was a massive, massive swing, I think, to, in my opinion, keep the game around. Because I honestly think, you know, you buy the game, you could still put it down versus, uh, you know, playing it for free. But I think, you know, you think about a month or two down the line and you say, well, I want to try out this game. Are you more willing to buy it or are you more willing to try it out if it's free? I think you'd be more willing to try it out if it's free. So keeping it on Game Pass, even if it leaves Game Pass, say, after six months, eight months, a year, which maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know what the contract length is, but I, I believe that to be true. You know, you think about November, December, you say, I want to really try out this game. I mean, sure, you could buy it for it. Maybe it's discounted by then, right? 20, 30 bucks, or you could just play it on Game Pass. So I think that was a huge help day one. I think you can obviously see that. Not again, really really based off the charts, but based off the player base. And then I think that's really going to help the game long term as well. But when you go on the Steam database, it's doing pretty darn good. I mean, it never broke, say, 20K, right? I think it got to 16, 17K was around its high. It's been at about 10, 11,000. It's clearly going down. Like every day, the peak of player uh, count isn't as high as it was the day before. But you have to think a lot of that's natural. It was never expected that this game two, three weeks in was all of a sudden going to like bust records or break even its own record, say from the first weekend. It had, I believe, the most players it was ever going to have, not just in the Steam database, but just in general. It had the most players that first weekend, basically, right? And it's never really going to hold up. But you can look at streaming numbers, people, not only, I guess, viewers, but also people playing it. The thing I worry about, the thing that I think is kind of obvious is that limitation on just one thing. And this is where the whole Dead by Daylight kind of you know comparison comes in. And look, I, I don't need to absolutely compare this game to Dead by Daylight. I don't think it needs to be Dead by Daylight literally at all. I really, really appreciate this game as its own thing. I think it nailed exactly what it needed to do. But it can be said, and I don't think this is a wrong thing to say, when you do have a game that's based off one property, and specifically more like one movie, right? So they can do other stuff, but they've always made it sound like they are, in a sense, limited, and they want to get the bugs and all that stuff kind of fixed works, which is absolutely the right mindset, and then they'll look down the road to doing more stuff, whether that's cosmetics, whether it's more family members, victims. But here's the thing. I think it's going to be more originality. I think it's going to be more of their family members, their victims that they throw into the game. When it comes to maps, I would absolutely expect more maps. And You know, the reason I'm bringing all this stuff up, I would expect all this stuff. I would expect over the next couple months that you would have at least one of each you know by October November if you don't have a new killer a new victim and a new map that would I would say hurt because you just think about it you know logically three maps five family members five victims eventually it'll get old now again what is success if the game is doing half as many people as it was doing in the beginning two months from now is that good I actually kind of think it is I think the number one thing obviously holding it back is it can't expand upon you know it can't do crossovers which I don't want it to do I've actually seen Twitter accounts that have said well you know what if we had a crossover with Chucky or what if we had a crossover with blank 
that's like that's like Dead by Daylight. I mean, that literally is that. This game is not that. It's not trying to be that. And I mean, yeah, would it be cool to see other you know killers in different horror franchises? Yeah, but well, number one, they should maybe get their own game. Have, you know, just make a game from scratch for them. Uh, but number two, you know, you've had this B Texas Chainsaw. I think they've nailed the atmosphere of Texas Chainsaw. This is not the game that's going to have 30 crossovers. I think that would feel weird. I don't think that would honestly feel right. And I don't really think uh, at the end of the day it would work. So I don't know. It's tough. I've said it before. You look at September, you look at October, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts the amount of games that are coming out. Now, they're all different, all different genres. You look at a game like Texas, is there really another game like it that's coming out in the next two, three months? No. So I think Halloween, the month of October, should help this game out. I think if this game is still chugging along, and like I said, some of the numbers we know, some we don't know, if it's got half as many, if it's even got 30 to 40% as many players in two months, months from now as it does now I think that's pretty successful and at the end of the day I've said this for things like Crash Team Rumble and other games I mean I only need it to survive like in my own personal experience my own personal selfish need I want it to survive as long as they want it to survive and I don't think when they actually are honest I don't think any developer or at least most maybe some really do believe say their game can last forever obviously we've seen that Fortnite Dead by Daylight Apex Legends wants to last like 20 years right I think most though if you honestly ask them, have like a lifespan in their head. I think if you ask Crash Team Rumble, do you think you'll be around in seven years? If they say yes, they're lying to you. If they say no, then, you know, obviously that's telling the truth there. So if Texas expects itself to be around for one year, and in that year they expect to give us three more maps, two victims, two killers, then let's do it, right? I'll play it, I'll support those killers, those victims, those maps, and then let the game exit out when it feels like it, and when they feel that it's run its course. And then all we can do is play it to show that support, right? To keep the game around as long as they think it can survive. But, you know, we're kidding ourselves. I honestly believe if you think this game is going to last three, four, five years, it's not meant for that. Maybe it can last more than a year. I think it honestly has a lot of momentum, but I don't know. You look at attention spans for people, you look at, again, the limitation, and I don't know how long Texas Chainsaw can keep people around if it can be like two, three years. But I think at least one, I think one is setting it rather well. And I think if you can keep a multiplayer only game around for a full year, I think you've done a pretty darn good job. So that's my opinion. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure as always you're subscribed, bell icon turned on, more Texas videos coming very soon. And I hope to see you all on the next one.